Hello everyone, it's me again, it's like IK, no brainer, welcome to a Star Wars Unlimited video. I wasn't expecting to necessarily do one of these, but I just had to talk about something that I have found, because I think I've managed to break the Grand Inquisitor not once, not twice, but three different ways using a very special card that no one is talking about or playing, and I needed to share this. Okay, so... This all started when I was trying to build a Grand Inquisitor deck with Sneak Attack. Uh, that is this card right here. Play a unit from your hand, it costs three less, enters play ready. Start the regroup phase, defeat it. See, I was trying to build this and then I found a YouTuber named Wu who was also trying to build this and he was playing the game. He's a lot more experienced than me. I've, I've, okay, gonna preface this, I haven't played much of this game at all. I'm not very experienced in this, not very deep, but you know me. Some of you might know me, new play new people, hi, hello, welcome. For those who have known me for a while, I tend to play a lot of jank, a lot of combos, a lot of crazy kind of kind of stuff. And there wasn't a lot in this first set of Star Wars Unlimited that really piqued my interest, apart from the Grand Inquisitor, because of his ability to deal two damage to a unit and ready it. So a unit can be played and then immediately ready and attack the base. And similarly, the sneak attack allows you to play some of the higher cost cards and then instantly attack with them and kill them. So the idea here was that I was trying to build some kind of combo deck that um, sneaks in and does a bunch of damage without people expecting it. Wu tried to do the same thing and built it into somewhat of a competitive deck shell idea. And then he was like, okay, I'm yelling at this to the community. Try to make this work because there is something here. And I, I know it. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been working, I've been trying to figure out the best way of doing it with Grand Inquisitor, and it came to me last night, and I'm very excited to share it. But first, story time. So, I was playing against an Iden Green deck with Energy Conversion Lab. Here's Iden, it's resource round six. What do they do? Well, okay, I've dealt some damage to the Seventh Sister, they've got six damage on the base, they, turn, they have the initiative, they turn one, they come out, they deploy their Iden, right? They deploy that Iden, it's got four it's got four damage, it's got a shield on it, it's going to attack the seventh. What do I do? I play Asteroid Sanctuary. Asteroid Sanctuary exhausts the Iden, and then I start giving my seventh sister a shield, and my opponent points out, ah, 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 this is a shield token to a friendly unit that costs three or less, not has power three or less. Whoops, okay, I don't get my shield, whatever. And then they play the card Takedown for five, which kills the seventh sister. All right, this, I think we're all agreed, this is a perfectly normal turn six for an item player. They also heal one off the base because when an enemy is defeated, they heal one. This is all perfectly normal. Uh, I've played Asteroid Sanctuary, I have four resources left. And it is from here that I win the game. <laughs> They're tapped out. And it all starts with Fifth Brother! Yeah! Okay, yeah, no, I know everyone plays Fifth Brother in Grand Inquisitor decks. These two guys are designed for each other because Fifth Brother, he does one extra damage on attack per health he has missing. So Grand Inquisitor who hits him for two means that Fifth, Fifth Brother is already attacking for four damage. Five because of his on attack trigger which lets him deal the damage to himself. So then, so Grand Inquisitor comes in, um, does some damage to 5th, and 5th can attack with 2 damage on him. When he attacks, he goes to 3 damage. That's 5 damage going into the base, okay? This is all fairly standard, trivial stuff. Um, now, if I am... Um, but I will... Yeah, no, I should go through the full combo for people who are unfamiliar with Grand Inquisitor and 5th Brother. So Grand Inquisitor readies 5th Brother, he goes in, and then he only does 2 damage here. He, he doesn't do the extra 1 damage, that, even though I've been talking about that. So he'll do... He'll put, bring that to 9, and then Grand Inquisitor will activate. Will... Uh, what's it called? Deploy. There we go, deploy. Now Grand Inquisitor's backside, when you have 6 resources, it costs 6 to deploy Grand Inquisitor, which is a bit uh, of a high number, but his ability is that when he attacks, you do a damage to another friendly unit for your less power and ready it. So you attack with Grand Inquisitor, they go 12, fifth brother then can ready again, and then he can attack one more time for another five. 17, okay? This is a pretty standard thing that Grand Inquisitors 
decks can do if your opponent's tapped out at six resources they can swing in for seven they can swing in for 12 damage and threaten another five if you don't immediately deal with the fifth brother in the next round 12 damage that's pretty good but that is not the 20 that i'm saying i can do here but it requires three cards. How often are you going to get these three cards? That's always a question, but let's not ruin the fun here. What else do we have? Well, I showed it earlier. We have Sneak Attack. So, Sneak Attack means that this guy costs one less. He enters play ready, and I can immediately attack with him. Well, this is a good card for something like a Palpatine or a Ruthless Raider or something that has a lot of attack. But with Fifth Brother, because I'm using all of his health to ready him, this isn't doing me much extra. I do two, I ready him, he takes two damage, I attack, goes up by four, uh, I, I get the Grand Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor attacks, another three, fifth brother readies, fifth brother attacks, that's another five, we're at 19. Okay, we did a two extra damage, we've done 14 damage. So, I still need to do six damage to kill them. What card is this card? What is this card that is causing six damage for two mana? In fact, it's causing six damage for one mana. It is Infiltrator's Skill. Plus one, plus one, attached unit gain saboteur. <laughs> yeah, a plus one health, plus one damage is six damage in this instance. Let's play it out here. Okay, so you play the fifth brother with sneak attack. You have the two resources ready and available. All right. We play Infiltrator Skill. Fifth Brother now has five HP. Remember how it cost all of his health to attack? Well, now it doesn't, because now he can do his on attack trigger to take one extra damage. His first attack is now attacking for five. So if I just bring them back to the five health, his first attack attacks for five. Okay. Grand Inquisitor hits him. He goes to three. He goes to three. Now, he's hitting for six. Then Grand Inquisitor readies, attacks, three more damage. Puts a fourth damage point on fifth, because again, plus one health and plus one attack. And now his final hit is hitting for two, plus one from Infiltrator Skill, plus four from here, seven. Five, six, seven. We have managed to do 21 damage just using these three cards from hand 21 damage wait a sec wait a second hang on that's that's not right that's not right let me let me do that again that that number is is off it's 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 more than that right like okay let me let me try this again sorry it's easy to do it's easy to theorize it but once i start actually doing it in the game with the actions okay so Two, he takes himself one damage. So now I'm doing three, four damage. So, one, two, three, four. All right, hit him, go up. All right, so, oh yeah, I play sneak attack for this, of course. So, he's now at two plus one plus three. Two plus one plus three is six, five, six. Grand Inquisitor readies. He does the damage. We put the one extra on fifth. Fifth attacks one more time. Two plus one plus four is seven, five, six, seven. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's twenty, not twenty-one. Yeah, I, I, I got a plus one somewhere in my in my calculations. Yeah, so twenty damage from hand because infiltrator skill gives plus one attack and plus one health, and it's the health that matters because fifth brother does damage based on his missing health. With this health difference. He gets an extra six damage out of him from this sneak attack. Okay, that's really good, but like, what if I'm not playing sneak attack in my decks? You know, I, I mean, this was kind of a crazy combo thing with, with you know, with Wu and stuff, like, uh, with, with the whole sneak attacks. What if I'm just not that committed? What if it's just Infiltrator skill in Fifth Brother? Well, it's actually still really good. So you play Fifth Brother, you play Infiltrator skill, Ready the Grand Inquisitor, boom, that's two damage. You attack and you can increase it to three. And so now you're doing two plus three plus one, that's six. So if I go back to five, that's six. So boop, boop. You ready the Grand Inquisitor, attacks, plus three. Goes back to the floor. 
Seven, five, six, seven, twenty-one. There we go. So that was still sixteen damage. As opposed to the twelve that I was showing with Fifth Brother Grand Inquisitor originally. Um, and sneak attack, sorry. With eleven. And, and sneak attack, yeah. So... If I just did 5th Brother without this in Infiltrator's skill, I would be doing um, 4 plus 5. I'd be doing 9, but with the Infiltrator's skill, I'm doing um, 6 plus 7, which is 13. Yeah, yeah. So the Infiltrator's skill on its own is 4 extra damage. Pretty good for a 1 cost. <laughs> that gives a plus 1 plus 1, right? Because the trick as well, of course, is that Grand Inquisitor can only ready units with three or less power. Fifth Brother still only has three power with Infiltrator skill. So even in other color of decks, this is still, I think, worth running. Because doing 16 damage out of nowhere from hand if your opponent is tapped out, I mean, I think that's going to happen, right? That's just going to be really good. So what other things can we do here? Because getting this three-card combo off is, um, I mean, drawing exactly the three cards you need is not easy to do in this game, where you have a 50-card deck, but you only get three copies of each card. So, what else do we have? Well, we have access to, we don't just have access to infiltrate skill, we can also run Snapshot Reflexes. Snapshot Reflexes is also the plus one, plus one. Remember, it's the health we care about the most, but the extra damage is nice. Um, so... We snap for reflexes, infiltrate a skill. We can run both of those for redundancy in yellow. You also have cards that do the same thing in blue. So blue actually has Devotion, which is a restore two, which is a plus one, plus one. It costs two resources, though. Um, but maybe you're playing this in general because you want to restore the base. I, I haven't seen this card see much play. There's also Resilient, which is a one cost zero, plus zero, plus three. Now, Resilient is actually really good with Grand Inquisitor for other kinds of cards like the Seventh Sister, because it gives you the health without changing the power value. So, well, okay, Seventh Sister is one option. There's also stuff like, uh, do I have a... Yeah, something like Seventh Fleet Defender can get given a plus three and then can be hit to, to ready. Um, not Bosk, but... Uh, uh, Seventh Fleet Defender can't be played even because that's blue. I was thinking more like a Cell Guard. Yeah, yeah, like a, a Cell Guard would be a good choice. Um, which is a which is a three mana three three, and then you can give it make it a three mana three six. Hit it, it becomes a three mana three four, and it gets to attack um, from Grand Inquisitor. Um, so Resilience is also a pretty good card in blue in general, so maybe you can just run that in general because that's the idea. We're trying to run cards that aren't necessarily going to impact us too badly if we draw them out of the combo. Uh, Resilient is a card that can definitely do that. Uh, are there other ways of getting a plus health? Not really. So you've got General Viz. Fifth Brother is an Imperial. Grand Inquisitor is an Imperial. Fifth, if Viz is on the board, <laughs> this could work, but no one plays Viz, even though he's a 3-3. Like, you could play this guy, you could play him in blue, perhaps. You, he's a good guy to put Resilient on, quite frankly, you know? He's a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. You're not losing too much by running him, but no one's going to keep a Viz alive, let you keep a Viz alive on round 6. Um, this is a 4-mana combo, just the two of them. Um, but that is quite nice, actually. I haven't mentioned that. With Sneak Attack in Infiltrator's skill, you are looking at a 4-mana combo, uh, a 3-mana combo, sorry, in total. Um, which is kind of insane that you can package this three cards into three mana. Um, that's the power of sneak attack right there. Um, Viz could work as an alternative to infiltrate a skill, I suppose. Not, not the easiest. Um, you've also got in green, you've got Vanguard Infantry and Bail Organa if you want to be really out of... Out of, uh, out of aspect here. Bail Organa, because you're not a hero character, it's going to cost you three to play him, but he does give XP tokens, and XP tokens are health generation, I suppose. Um, you also have Gideon. I forgot to put Gideon on here. He's blue. Whenever a unit dies, it can give Fifth Brother a thing, but you're not... I mean, it's going to be really awkward to be able to have a Gideon on board, play Fifth Brother, have Gideon kill something so that Fifth Brother gets a it gets an XP counter, and have your opponent not interfere with you in any way there. Um, 
but you know, it could work. And then finally, there's Academy Defense Walker, which is a card no one plays, but it can give an XP token to each friendly damaged unit. And maybe you're running a damaging deck with the Grand Inquisitor, I suppose, maybe? Perhaps? Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately what we're doing is we're lying to you, actually. I'm kind of lying to you outright because this was not a three-card combo, was it? In my story, it was four because I had Asteroid Sanctuary to exhaust the Aiden. And this is going to be a problem um, throughout because your opponent has the... Uh, they always have their leader. And your removal cards have triple hitting leaders. And if something like an Aiden comes out turn six, if I did not have a way to exhaust this Aiden, Aiden could have killed my fifth brother when I tried to do my combo. Um, what the... Yeah, there, there, there we go. Aiden could have killed my fifth brother. And that is a concern. So what can you do instead? Uh, well, you can't, can't really. That's why I'm playing Asteroid Sanctuary to exhaust the enemy. Could play no good to be dead instead, but uh, I probably should. But uh, the, the Wu's list wants to run Java and Asteroid Sanctuary is a trick and that's why you're running it. You should definitely check out Wu's video first <laughs> to look at the... I, I built it kind of based off of him a little bit. Um, just, just the one that was in the story, that is. Um, most of the time, though, like, a sneak attack is not as good as a surprise strike. But in this one instance, my sneak attack was doing four damage uh, instead of three. So for once, it was better than the surprise strike, which is usually just more consistent. But I said I was only breaking... I said that I was going to break Grand Inquisitor three ways in this video. We've only broken him one way so far. But all of them are going to require giving him extra health through something like Infiltrator's skill. Um, what's the second way? The second way, if I just want to throw these away, the second way is this, this card here. And it is Keep Fighting. So this is a card that I think some people have picked up on with Grand Inquisitor already. It says ready a unit with three or less power. It's something people have looked at. Um, I didn't know about it until after I started trying to find people specifically to see if they had figured it out because I'd never seen this before until I had already figured it out myself and then I started seeing it in a couple of places. But Keep Fighting says ready a unit with three or less power. What Keep Fighting doesn't say is ready a non-leader unit with three or less power. So Keep Fighting can ready the Grand Inquisitor. And the Grand Inquisitor on attack readies another unit. So let's do the exact same thing with my uh, with my resources. Now this is the problem. It's going to cost me full a full six to do this. Um, so this is not nearly as consistent because your opponent will be able to deal with it leader wise. But if I do this, if I have fifth brother out and I equip him with infiltrator's skill, I do the damage. Booty boom. In fifth brother attacks, he gives himself plus one. He's now doing six to the base. Uh, let's start it at zero. He's going to do six to the base. Okay. Um, wait, could I afford to do that one damage? Yes, I could. Yeah, yeah. We re no, he can't. I can't. I can't do that one damage. It has to be five because I need the one extra health. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. So fifth brother doesn't do a damage to himself. He just does the uh, this for five. Then. Grand Inquisitor comes along, he does another three, he readies the fifth brother, fifth brother takes one more damage, fifth brother attacks, five, six more damage, because two plus three plus one is six. Then we play keep fighting on the Grand Inquisitor, this was a six mana, three card combo, Grand Inquisitor attacks, three damage, readies fifth brother again, and fifth brother attacks for seven. Five, six, seven, and we are one away from a kill from zero. <laughs> we are so close <laughs> to just killing him. This is so close. <laughs> I'm one, one away from an out of, uh, from just out of hand kill. Okay, what happens if I don't have the infiltrator skill though? Like, uh, if I don't have the infiltrator skill, is this still good? If, if the combo is half, is this still good? Because we saw that with Infiltrator skill and Fifth Brother, I'm still doing 16. What am I doing with Just Keep Fighting? So with Just Keep Fighting, I can now afford... Um, I can't afford to ready the Fifth Brother twice. So Grand Inquisitor comes, I hit, uh, I attack, I do four. So four. 
The Grand Inquisitor readies. He hits the fifth brother. He attacks for seven. Uh, fifth brother attacks. That's another five. I now ready the Grand Brother. Fifth in but I now have to ready the fifth brother rather than the Grand Inquisitor. So fifth brother readies. He attacks for another five. Seventeen. I mean, it's a five mana combo with two cards, but 17 damage out of hand is still pretty good. In fact, it's still really good. It's really quite trivial to manage to get the extra eight damage in from somewhere if you're Grand Inquisitor. You just kind of have to have not died this turn and had your opponent not able to interact with this at all. So maybe this is more of a situation where you play this with control right where, you, where you're playing this like as a red blue control deck or something or like a red green ramp deck and you're able to like ramp into your more resources or you're able to just use the threat of being able to do 17 damage because that's the key it's not necessarily that you have the 17 damage in hand but it's that you have the threat to one shot their base that causes them to have to play suboptimally maybe they can't attack your base with the Aiden. Maybe they can't attack something. They have to keep something back, and they have to start passing. And if they start passing, then you can take control. You've never played Fifth Brother. You've never revealed Grand Inquisitor. So long as you, you're, you don't have to activate your leader on resource six. You can wait, and then you can just be like, boop, I'm just going to Super Laser Blast you. <laughs> you know? Okay, Super Laser Blast costs eight, not seven, but you get the idea. You just start saying, okay, fine. If I, if I can't do that, I'm just going to sneak attack in an Emperor Palpatine on turn seven with initiative. Just blow up the bases. Just blow up all your units with Overwhelm. Attack for six. Kill stuff, you know? The threat of having this combo is kind of scarier than the combo itself. Because they know if they go on turn eight and turn seven and they play their Darth Vader or if they're on turn eight and they play their super laser blast or if they're on turn nine and they play their Avenger you then just out of hand kill them that's terrifying they can't play any of their high cost units this is fantastic against control if you can get to a board state similar to this where they've not got units out they've only managed to use events that's terrifyingly good that's fantastic so the second way you break grand inquisitor is keep fighting but there is one other thing you can do um that said if you want another keep fighting you have to go into mono red for it but it is aggression it costs four this is expensive you're going to be paying seven to do fifth brother plus aggression you it's unlikely you imagine to get to the eight for the infiltrator skill but you know hey maybe a fifth maybe a fifth managed to survive last turn i don't know aggression ready a unit with three or less power deal four damage to a unit uh, draw a card, remove two upgrades. The, the important part is the readier unit with three or less power. It costs two more than keep fighting, but it is an alternative if you're desperate. It allows you to draw, it allows you to run two sets of keep fighting, because the thing is with consistency, you want combo pieces that you can run multiple of. You can run Infiltrator Skill and Snapshot Reflexes together in Red Blue. That means you've got six out of 50 chances of drawing one of them for the combo. You can do uh, Aggression and Keep Fighting. You can do Keep Fighting and, and um, Sneak Attack. That's Asteroid Sanctuary. I meant to have Sneak Attack. You can do Keep Fighting, Sneak Attack. Those kind of are very similar cards um, for this particular combo. Keep Fighting is better, but Sneak Attack still manages to get you in for 21 instead of tw uh, for 20 instead of 24 so that's still is still pretty pretty comparable um the problem of course is drawing fifth brother fifth brother the turn the games where fifth brother never shows up is a really sad one i almost am tempted to just hard mulligan for fifth brother i'll be honest with you uh green can play recruit or it can play darth vader to try and find fifth brother but fifth brother is kind of the linchpin here um you can play stuff like Partisan Insurgent. Um, he's He has one power and he does plus two on attack. He's got raid two. So like with Infiltrator skill or something, you can kind of sort of make it work. But then you're, you're still doing around 15-ish. You're not doing the 24s and the 20s. 
right? Like, if you're not doing fifth brother levels damage. Similarly, seventh sister, you can. She's pretty bulky with six, so like she she can stick around from turn five to turn six, and then on turn six you might be able to like aggression, and you might be able to like aggression and keep fighting combo or aggression and something. You can't play infiltrate a skill on seventh sister because she's a three, but you can ready her multiple times with grand inquisitor activations. Um, so you you could keep fighting and aggression. And like ready Grand Inquisitor twice, which ready Seventh Sister another two times, which then like is four activations of Seventh Sister. Um, you, you can you can do some stuff there, um, but again, it's all based on your opponent on turn six not mi not interfering with the combo, and that's where the Asteroid Sanctuary and the the Vanquish was particularly important. Um, the opponent saw the Seventh Sister on turn five, killed it, and then died as a result. Um, you know. But you've got some combo pieces here. And the one last one, which is by far the most fragile, but also the most why haven't people been playing this earlier, is, is Rallying Cry. I mean, no one plays Rallying Cry. It's a terrible card, but it works. It's not at all terrible in these combos. If I have Fifth Brother and Rallying Cry, this is a two-card combo, and look at what this thing does. If I start at zero... And I say, okay, just with these two cards, just fifth, just fifth Brother Rallying Cry. Start with Fifth Brother. Okay, that's three resources. I then exhaust hit Fifth Brother for two. I then play Rally... I then activate Grand Inquisitor and play Rallying Cry for my other three resources. Fifth Brother then swings in. He's going to be hitting for six... Grand Inquisitor swings in, he hits for 5, readies the 5th brother, who then hits in for 7. I mean, that's 17 damage again. <laughs> just just off of... This, Rallying Cry is 6 damage here. If you manage to combo that with the... Um, if you'd manage to combo that with Infiltrator Skill, if this was turn 7 instead, you'd be looking at an extra 4 damage on top of this, right? You'd be looking at 21 damage. So that rallying cry is, in a way, another alternative to keep fighting an, ag an aggression. And at this point, you can see that you've got some significant combo potential here by going mono-red. You've got significant power potential by going red-blue with the control. You've got significant potential with the greens going for the recruits and, like, I guess, Vanguard Infantry with ECL, um, LAG Conversion Lab. Like, I mean, that's a thing you can do. And then, as, as an alternative to infiltrate a skill, and then in yellow we've got snapshot reflexes, asteroid sanctuary. Uh, sorry, snapshot reflexes, surprise strike, sneak attacks. Like we've got a lot of redundancy here. It just kind of relies on fifth brother being drawn. But yeah, I think this is really cool and really good, and I. We need to be playing Infiltrator Skill in all of our decks. We really do. So with all of these ideas running, racing through your head, what are we thinking here? What can we do? Well, I have built a deck. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not even saying it's competitive. I really haven't experimented with this beyond like hitting people who are in the random looking for games in the for TTS and stuff, like random lobbies here. But... I do have a deck list, and if you want to copy it, it is now up on screen. Um, the idea is very similar to Woo's, but I'm take, I've taken out a lot of the low end and I've put in infiltrator skill and keep fighting. And I've gone with a lot more... I don't like putting in two ofs of things and one ofs of things. I prefer the three ofs. That will probably change when I actually um, learn the game better and want some of these... Um, one-off cards, but the theory is very simply that I have um, I have the asteroid sanctuaries and sneak attacks uh, for tricks with the Jabba, Jabba the Hut. I'm running that package. I've got Boba. I've got Bosk. I've got just you know the standard mid-gamey good stuff with the Fifth Brothers, the keep fighting infiltrate a skill combo. Um, if I get into things. If I get into more of a controlling matchup where I need to find this combo to win, then I've got the uh, surprise 
reflexes, and that's another thing, right? This combo doesn't need to go off. It doesn't need to ha doesn't need to go off in full. It doesn't even need to go off in part in order to win games with this deck. Uh, but it is very useful. Uh, I'm in the sideboard. I've got the surprise reflexes, three copies of as um, redundancy for um, force throw. And I've just realized you can't see my um, mouse, so let me just fix that. Okay, there we go. So yeah, I've got the sideboard. I've got snapshot reflexes there as a um, support of infiltrator skill if I need that. Some force chokes, some waylays, um, just not some uh, aggro controlling tools against some of the aggro matchups. Force throw against... Well, against control it works, against Bova it works. It's a little bit awkward here. I'm... I never know when to bring in Force Throw, but I know it's a good card. It's just I don't have much Force units, because if I'm keeping Fifth Brother in hand, very importantly, if I'm not playing Fifth Brother, it's important to not play Fifth Brother on turn three if you do find one, even though he's the standard, like, turn three. He's a standard turn three play of just hitting the opponent for five. Um, but, like, don't play your Fifth Brothers. Play your other stuff. Play your Open Fires, your Bobas, your Seventh, your Cell Block Arts. That's why I've got a lot more three drops um, rather than um, rather than some other people. Other people might not have as many three drops. I have a lot because I want to have a turn three play, uh, a resource turn three play that isn't Fifth Brothers specifically. Um, I run the Jabbers, the Seventh Sisters, Bosks. Ruthless Raider and Emperor Palpatines are, of course, here because they work really nicely with Sneak Attack. Um, they can also finish off games that are, like, having a lot of trouble finishing and ending. Um, and, yeah, they keep fighting. Uh, Bib and Crafty Smuggler are interesting here because Infiltrator's skill can also be played on these guys early and then do a lot of work. Um, Infiltrator's skill means that Bib and Crafty can actually kill other Crafties. Um, Bib can also then start attacking base doing decently. It's really awkward to deal with these guys because they have shields early on. Um, so with an infiltrator skill you can like punish your opponent for like tapping out on on resource turn three perhaps um, by being able to, to deal with them uh, or as some more anti-aggro. This deck can kind of play control. May, th there's probably some serious control like stuff here. I also am playing Jedi City. You could probably just get away with the, the other yellow battlefield that gives you 30 health. Uh, I'm playing Jedi City because I like the idea of having a battlefield that does something. It works really nicely with Bosk actually because then you can remove the this, you can reduce the cost by the, the damage out there. You can reduce the attack of the opponent by 4 play Bosk and then he pushes into something and still has ambushes into something and still has full health so that they have to either deal with it or on turn six you're threatening some serious stuff with all these events that you have and yeah that, this is again i'm not saying this is the best but this is what i've been running for a while for well this is what i ran last night and i had a lot of fun <laughs> this has been me games 99 aka no brainer thank you guys so much for watching play some miracles do some stuff proliferate this everywhere and then put the fear into them on turn six so that on turn seven I can just say I can just say ha ha ha, ha here is my <laughs> super laser here is my Emperor Palpatine ah, I'm going to destroy the board now and they can't do anything about it because they were so scared on turn six of everything and now the table is flipped and everything is ruined and that was very anticlimactic thank you for watching into the abyss Signing out.